In this video guys we're just going to run you through five quick tips or tricks, things to consider when it comes to building a koi pond. Just little things that I wish I knew when I was back building my first pond. So we're going to get into that right now. The first thing that I want to talk about considering when it comes to building a koi pond is location. It's one of the things that I think is fundamentally overlooked time and time again by, by people that are building their first pond or just coming into the hobby. They'll probably look at a corner of their garden and say, yep, let's stick a pond there without any consideration for, for what's going on. I mean, there's various things that location covers. Like, is it in direct sunlight? If it is, that can have adverse effects on the colours of your koi. It can cause massive temperature fluctuations if it's a small pond or, or a shallow pond. You can have mad algae bloom. And these are the sort of things that might put a new hobbyist off uh, and they end up packing up early, you know, a few, a few weeks into the hobby. Because if you imagine when you're out there drinking your strawberry daiquiri and your wife runs and all your fish are in the bottom corner of the pond and you're thinking, oh, these fish don't like me and you're throwing food in and they're not feeding. And then you come in and sit down in your underpants in front of homes under the hammer and it's half six, seven o'clock at night and you look on your cameras and you can see your fish all up swimming about. Fact is, they're in the corner of the pond just trying to get a little bit of shade. They can suffer from sunburn and everything else. I mean, there's other things to, to consider with location. Can I get electrics to the pond? Can I get uh, waste drainage from the pond easy enough? The water table, where is it sat in terms of the water table? So that, uh, all sorts of things to be considered when it comes to picking a location for your pond. Another thing with the location of your pond is the substrate. What are you digging into? The last thing you know you want to consider is planning a, a you know a four or five feet deep pond and going out there and one foot down hitting solid rock or even worse hitting a gas main or water line something like that. So to just make sure you know what uh, you know what you're dealing with. So that, that's definitely my tip number one. Number two on my tips list is uh, definitely planning. Once you've picked your location and you're, you know, you're happy with where your pond's gonna go, plan that crap out. Draw it out, map it out in a piece of paper. The pond's gonna go here, the filters are gonna be here. And um, look at it, draw it out time and time again until you get the best use of the space. Consider making the pond as big as you can possibly afford or as big as the space will allow because what, what we see is a lot of people building their first pond think oh yeah you know five foot by two foot by three foot deep is is more than enough for me but once they progress in the hobby they end up fish growing things get bigger and they end up having to knock down a pond that they've spent all summer building and they've plowed all that money and it's kind of a false economy so you've You've wasted all that money to come back and, and, and end up building a bigger pond anyway. So go as big as your budget, I'll lie. That's my tip, that's from my experience. I mean, my first little pond over in, in, in our place over in Wales was absolutely tiny. And I thought, yeah, that'll be enough for me. And I've had 4,000, 5,000 gallon ponds since. So just uh, just future proof it for yourselves. The last thing you wanna be doing is, is wasting money building a pond only to have to go and, to, to go and do it again. Give yourself ample filter room as well. There may be a couple of years down the line where you want to upgrade your filter or change your filtration. And if you've literally got a filter and then built your four walls of your filter room around it, you're not, you're not going to be able to upgrade or, or, or change that easy. So do, do think about these things. When, when it comes to building a pond, you know, future-proof it for yourself. Next on my list has got to be bottom drains. If you can fit one, fit one and the more the merrier in my opinion if even if your pond's small and you can get two because it may be I, I've, I've seen it recently with a friend of mine he wants to draw more water from his 2000 gallon pond to put through his filters but he just can't do it because he's only got the one bottom drain so that kind of restricted the amount of flow that he could have in his pond without actually dropping a pump into it and running a pump fed version don't get me wrong, I've seen some fantastic ponds out there that are pump fed and, and they work very well. But in my opinion, it is just 100% better to fit a bottom drain if you can. With pump fed systems, you've got pipe work in the pond, pumps in the pond. And it's no good spending your kids inheritance on a wonderful fish to put it in your pond 
slightly different parameters and the fish is thinking well the nitride in this pond is making my bum itchy I'm just gonna go and give myself a good scratch over here on this pump and it ends up damaging a fish that you've paid an absolute fortune for that's just one aspect the you know it can be unsightly looking into a pond and the last thing you want to see is fish waste sat in the bottom which can often be the case when you're running a pump fed system and you just do not get that with a well done bottom drain gravity fed system and it's not you, you know you don't have to go like spin drift or aerated expand you can buy a four inch bottom my, my last pond my last 2000 gallon pond had a cockney koi four inch I, I built that whole pond apart from the filtration for less than a thousand quid so it doesn't have to be all singing, all dancing, you know, that I think it was about 25 quid for a standard four inch bottom drain and it does the job and it does the job well. So um, my advice, install a bottom drain if you can. You will definitely regret not doing it when, when you complete your build for sure. I didn't on my first pond. I had them pump fed and, and I regretted it. So as has most people that have been in the game a long time. So yeah, definitely 4 inch bottom drain, can't recommend it enough. So that brings me to the next one on the list that I want to talk about and that is filtration. My advice, if you can, is buy your filters first. Work out, plan the pond, follow the, the previous steps, get your location, plan it and work out the filtration that you're going to need for your desired stocking levels in that pond and purchase it first and put it to the side because like I've said previously building a koi pond can cost a lot more money than you plan for and the last thing you want to do is get to the end of the build and have an absolutely stunning koi pond all completed all singing all dancing you're about to plumb your filtration in and you think oh I've spent that much on the pond I'm gonna scrimp on the filters do not do it filtration number one priority get that bought first, put it away, and then if you get three quarters of the way through your pond build and you're thinking, oh, I haven't got the money to clad it now, it doesn't really matter, you can clad it next season. What you can't do is do without filters until next season. So if I'm faced with a dilemma, I can have a fiberglass liner in my pond over a rubber liner at the expense of my filtration. It isn't going to happen. I'm going to have the Boxwell liner every day. I've had that, that pond I have outside now is the first pond I've ever had fiberglass. All my ponds have had boxwell liners over the years and I've never had a problem. They've all been fine. So I think fitted fine, they are fine and they are a fraction of the price of fiberglass. So I think it all just comes down to, to what you can afford and all I'm saying is focus primarily on your filtration first. Once you've got that boxed off then, you know, by all means go and line your pond with gold leaf if it makes you feel better. But Priority number one is filtration. Last but not least, when your pond's up and running is time. Give it time. Stock your pond gradually over a period of time. You're trying to build an ecosystem for these fish to live in and that requires consistency. So throwing a boatload of fish in there when you've got new pond syndrome and things are up and down is gonna cause you a lot of problems and I think that this is one of the main things that puts a lot of new hobbyists off when they're just coming in because they may lose fish, you know, they'll go out, they'll buy 10 fish, throw them in the pond and then wonder why they start having issues because you got your new pond syndrome. They might not have uh, bought the filtration required. They're throwing food in hand over fist. So just a few fish at a time, slow and steady. Let your filters build up, then introduce more. Let the filters build up again. Slow, steady and patient. But anyways, thanks for taking the time out to watch this little video. That's just five things that I wish I... I had known whenever I was I was building my very first pond back in the day so I hope it helped you out so that's it thanks for watching everyone and remember hit the subscribe button smash the notification bell and I'll catch you on the next one take it easy